So the first item uh, in the agenda is the approval of the agenda. I have a motion to approve the agenda. Uh, move to amend the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Right. And your amendment? Aye. Uh, uh, under um, appointments, uh, I want to add uh, Tom Piotti, uh, second term, budget and finance. Okay. I'd also like to amend the agenda if I could. Okay. Mr. Warner. Um, I just want to add in a discussion topic on the new business. Um, Environmental and Natural Assets Committee has done a lot of research, Sharon in particular, on uh, flight turf, which is a turf, which is a grass that deters geese and deer from, they, they don't like the taste of it. We're talking, we're looking at possibly doing some initial testing around the Northgate Pond. I, everybody has the information that Sharon put <coughs> together. I just wanted to have a discussion on a new business, just to give you an idea. Okay, I know so you the, haven't read it yet, but I just wanted to, you know, bring it up. So this document that we have, it says motion to the board, so it's not a motion. It's, it's not a motion. A it's just a discussion. I didn't put together a motion. I figured you'd want to read up on it first. It's not It's not over $15,000, so we certainly don't need a motion, but I just wanted everybody to get everybody on the same page, give you all an opportunity to look into it. And so we'll put that under... Uh, and could somebody, uh, uh, Larry, could somebody email me a copy of that so I... I'm privy to this discussion topic document. Um, yeah, I have it on my phone. I'll send it to you right now. Thank you. So I Thank you. you're going to be here. Okay, so we'll put that under new business after uh, first reading of uh, resolution FO3. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> what do we, how do we want to title this, Tom? Um, discussion topic on what? Uh, discussion topic on geese control. There's two way to control them, so my way to nobody likes. <coughs> them, so. Are there any any other changes to the uh, agenda? I can have a motion to approve the uh, amended agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right. Okay, the uh, next item is the approval. We've got uh, four sets of minutes to approve. So we have a motion to approve the minutes from the special meeting on July 18th, 2021. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Any changes? Seeing none, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. The second. Uh, Minutes are from the special meeting on July 27th, 2021. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Larry? Yes. Larry? Yes. Yeah, I have a question about those minutes. Um, was Frank Daly not present at that meeting? <clears throat> He's not listed as present. I thought he was there. I think Frank's been to all the meetings. So was he present, Frank? Are you there? Were yes, you I present? Was there. Yeah, he was there. Okay, so, okay, so there. that needs to be amended. Then. That needs to be corrected. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, so uh, Camilla will make those corrections. Uh, Larry, I, I have a question. What is answering during the part where uh, all in favor and then all opposed? She's answering yes during opposed. Is that a late response or is that actually? It's a late, it's a late response and it was a discussion. Okay. So under the discussion. Okay. Any other changes to the minutes of uh, July 27th? Seeing none, all in favor of the approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Uh, the next is uh, the minutes from July 30th, 2021 to close session meeting. Is there a, mo a motion to approve? So moved. And it's a second? Second. Okay. Any, uh, we can't have any discussion on this. Question, though. There yeah. is, there is an, uh, I wanted to point out an error. Maybe we can take it offline. Okay. 
Do you want to hold off on uh, yeah. voting on these? I'd say my recommendation would be to table this until we can get the uh, error correct. Okay. So it's, we'll table the, the uh, minutes from the closed session. Michelle, you have that? Okay. I think we need a motion to table it, too. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 The, the aye. Approval of the minutes from July 30, 2021 are tabled. Um, and the uh, I need a motion to approve the minutes from the special meeting of August 9th, 2021. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? Any changes? Seeing none, all in favor of, of approving the minutes from August 19th, 2021, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion. The uh, Minutes are approved. Okay, I don't. Uh, I don't have any special uh, any president's remarks tonight. Uh, the one item that we are going to we're going to uh, Frank Adeli is going to lead a discussion on uh, the um, uh, effluent discharge to the golf course and the county's request uh, that the board indicate whether or not we support it or not. It's really not an issue to be voted on at this point, but um, we'll do a consensus uh, so that the board has, so that the county has an idea whether or not uh, the board of directors is in favor of moving forward at this point. There are no contracts. Um, there's no proposals at this point, except for the county to, to move forward with their plans and to move forward with obtaining, putting it on their schedule to try to uh, get the bond issue going in October. Okay, so we have, uh, Camille, we have announcements of uh, email, an email vote. I, I, I was, we, we had one email, mo email vote during this term. Yes. And there was a favorable vote by all who were involved in this. Yeah, but you got to read it. Okay, vote it was, we moved to approve the proposed declaration of restrictions submitted to the board regarding Triple Crown property. The DRs were the subject of a special board meeting where comments and corrections were addressed. The requested changes have been made and approved by council representing OPA. Triple Crown Properties is developing land adjacent to Ocean Pines and based on a prior agreement, the development will be turned over to Ocean Pines once the properties have been sold. In order to start sales, the declarations and restrictions must be approved by the board. And the email vote was to go ahead and, and approve the uh, uh, the changes that had been made uh, after our special meeting. Yes. yes. All right, the uh, general manager's report. Okay. Okay, so let's start off with uh, some nice pictures there. Obviously, we had Labor Day weekend, uh, a lot of our amenities there. Overall, the whole weekend was very successful. I just wanted to show some pictures there. Turn the page. Okay, continuing with questions, concerns, info at oceanpines.org. We've been very successful, and each month it's getting better and better, and we're seeing a lot of efficiencies with our team because we've been able to respond, respond quickly uh, and efficiently, and we'll continue to advertise that. Turn the page. Okay, turn the page. Okay, so some of the initiatives and everything what I'll talk about over the next couple of slides, uh, along with pictures, is all listed there. We'll start off with the pickleball courts. Turn the page. So we did do striping. I'm not sure if you could see it there, but there's a blue line. We striped the, uh, the ninth court. Um, I received a lot of uh, input from the advisory committees on what they needed. Uh, now it is a multi-purpose court that both the tennis and the pickleball players, and then we all know that the pickleball is growing and growing. So this, I believe, for the amount of money and everything was uh, well spent. Turn the page. Okay, so the golf course, a uh, lot, lot going on down there. Uh, we just finished uh, the team here, and uh, Justin's here tonight. We did our aerating, uh, a lot of work being done. The greens, uh, sitting here are a lot better than I did the last three years. 
uh, the greens, the fairways, credit to the team, credit to everybody, the association, the equipment that we have. The course is in really good, the best shape I've seen it in 12 years. Turn the page. All right, so the bulkheads, I did come to the board, last board uh, meeting, and uh, asked uh, for approval to go forward with bulkhead work that was to be scheduled in the four-year plan. We're just doing it earlier uh, in the time now where uh, Fish and Marine had some downtime. They gave us a good price. We went in there. This was, was definitely needed, and it's right on track, and uh, everything's there. So project started August 20th. It will be completed around September 20th, 24th, but everything's going well there. All right, turn the page. Okay, landscaping. So if you have been driving around or if you live in some of the, the areas, uh, the landscaping team, part of Public Works, has worked on the entrances to Wood Duck, Wood Duck 2. They did some work in the North Gate, uh, White Horse Campus, and... Uh, we're looking at putting in a new sign. I believe that's what you see there on the right, uh, coming into Whitehorse Park in the uh, admin building. So we are doing it. We're going to continue. We have some of uh, it's listed there, Saltgrass, Teal Bay, Bay Colony. They'll be doing work there as well as around the two ponds. Turn the page. Okay, fire hydrants uh, in partnership with the fire department. If you look at the left picture, the picture obviously tells the whole story. Our fire hydrants, I guess it was overgrown. Uh, whatever, plants, whatever, vines. You can see what they look like on the second page once they took it all down, and now they're painting them, and again, uh, working uh, in partnership with the fire department. All good, all good stuff, right? So a lot of stuff going on. There's some highlights of some of the stuff there. Okay, turn the page. All right, DMA. So um, We've been working on the DMA, what I call DMA light study, right? We had the original DMA study, what, three, four years, four years ago. Uh, we said we would do this. Um, we're a little off track with the COVID and, and lining up with the DMA team. However, um, I can tell you now, progress to date, DMA and the Ocean Pines Management has reviewed the detail and, and the changes were sent back to DMA, right? They own the, uh, the system that uh, handles all the input. Um, I went through it, made some changes. Uh, we have it all spread out. There'll be percentages. Uh, everything's laid out la last time. And if anything, even though this was called a light study, I, I think we saw a lot more improvements to the process than even last time, but last time was the first time. So what's next steps? Final draft of reserve study to be returned week of September 13th by DMA to OP management. Copies will be made and distributed next week to budget and finance committee. Presentation to the Budget and Finance Committee tentatively scheduled for the first week of October. Presentation to board scheduled for the October meeting. So and even before that, after BNF, we will have Doug. I'm trying to make sure that we maximize uh, or efficiently keep this thing within budget. We will have him come in after we meet with BNF and, and field all their questions. We'll have Doug come in. I will do some type of town hall or, or like we did last time, open to the whole community. Uh, there's a lot of good information in there, and I, I would certainly attend it, even if I wasn't working for Ocean Pines. Okay, next on, on the topic that I had in the front, but no pictures, no slides. Hey John, Doug, yeah. Sorry. John, you might want to confirm Doug you're referring to is Doug Green. Oh, from I DMA. apologize, I Doug. Doug. Yes, and you know, this happened a couple times. I got emails, and I was like, why are we talking to Doug Park? Yes, apology, Doug Green, not, not Doug Parks. He will be part of it, obviously, as the liaison to the BNF, but sorry about that. Sorry, Doug. No, no sorry. All right, so next is uh, what I wanted to talk about, the affluent water. We did have a town hall meeting. Uh, I believe it went well. There was probably about 50 people there. There was a lot of questions, um, and I believe we answered all the questions, uh, the, the, the county as well as the uh, golf maintenance. And um, I know that uh, Frank and the board has that to discuss tonight. Um, and so we'll wait for that later. The other thing is, when I came forward on the bulkheads, I, I know one of the board members asked about dredging. I think it was uh, it was Tom. Um, we we did put per the last two years we did not receive the permits. One was because of COVID. Uh, we did follow up. We've been following up. Uh, Novi spoke to the uh, to the Army Corps of Engineers or whoever handles this. The person that he has as a comp uh, contact. The seven, seven permits from two years ago, we believe we'll be receiving that soon. And they're also going to try to work on the 20 we had put in for this year. 
So we hope to hear something on that. We are working on it, and uh, we definitely have it on our list. Are you going to wait until you receive the permits before you notify the people where it's going to be, or do you, know, you have I, a list of where they're going to dredge already? So I will, I will talk to Noby. I believe we should talk. We, we will notify them. We can do that now before I get the permits. Yeah. Because it looks like now it looks like we're going to get the permits. Okay. Yeah, I was yep. We will do that. Okay. Turn the page. Okay. So there, usually I have here it just says financials, uh, but these are the areas uh, I just wanted to highlight the amenities. But I will be talking about this as I go through the financials with the highlights and the analysis. All right. Turn the page. Okay. Month of July. Month of July. We usually, we, we, we show the revenues, the expenses. If you look on the far right, we are favorable to budget for the month of July, 231,000. That's just for the month. How did we get there? What, what exactly is going on? Well, it's pretty much consistent with what I've been saying so far um, for the last several months. We have organic growth in revenue at the amenities, um, golf, aquatics, Racket sports, food and beverage along the lines of banquets, organic growth and revenue, expenses. We have looked at the expenses for aquatics and racket sports, and it's safe to say that we have savings in there. We have savings, we have efficiencies, we have expenses that we believe are not needed. So I'm not going to tell you the timing. I'm telling you that we have cut expenses, we have increased revenue. Aquatics, racket sports, golf. Uh, golf definitely has organic revenue. On the golf side, it, it's showing up more in pricing right now, uh, as well as rounds. So food and beverage, the banquets, he's not going to add a park, but I can tell you that in all four amenities, and you'll see that with the numbers. Everything else, all the other departments and everything, we have favorability. Some of it is timing. Uh, I know the marina has been a little soft because they've had a lot of uh, small boat advisories and uh, they're kind of not, not as high favorability to budget, but we did increase their budget a lot from last year. All right, so 231 favorable for the month. Next is year to date. Year to date, 970,000 favorable to budget. It's pretty much the same thing I just told you for the month. Organic growth and revenue. Expense, expense cutting pretty much cut across the board, some more, especially in aquatics and racket sports. And I'm not talking about payroll costs. Yes, in payroll costs, we did have, we had situations not being able to cover positions just like everybody else. Uh, so the payroll costs are down, but I'm talking about non-payroll costs. We, we, we cut expenses there. Revenue growth, um, we did invest in, and the association invested in, we've improved the facilities at racket sports. Fences, courts, uh, other things that weren't fixed for years. Aquatics, she's, she's been very successful. The whole team did a great job this, this summer considering what was going on. And like I said, organic growth there. Down in swim lessons, but everything else looking real good. Banquets just keeps coming in. The banquets is, is all organic growth there. Hopefully that continues. The bar and grill at the clubhouse is doing very well. If anybody was there Sunday, the place was packed. Food's good, really good specials, and it's showing. I do have some timing. Uh, rec on the year to date, Rec and Parks was unfavorable. It is timing, just a matter of when the revenue was uh, booked and not booked and, and some payroll, but basically she, she'll be on uh, budget. So bottom line, I know several representatives of the board during the budget process, as well as over the last several months, have asked me what exactly, what is our plan for aquatics? We had a plan for aquatics. We had a plan for racket sports. We implemented, there's your numbers. Some hard calls were made. I made them. I eliminated a position that we took out of the budget from the beginning. That one esoteric position, open position, Saved us 120,000. So that's not even reflected here. Uh, but everything else, the organic growth for revenue and the expense cutting. Big questions on that. And just to put this in perspective, and it is early, but as far as forecasting, um, the golf favorability, we, for golf, it's very hard to forecast because a big number is in April. 
and that's dependent upon the weather and, and the situation with COVID. We did not build in a COVID adjustment for, for golf, so we'll see where that is. But right now, they're favorable, I think, like $200,000. The, the, the aquatics, the racket sports, uh, they are forecasting more, you know, favorability to budget. And the same thing with food and beverage. Okay, so across the board, everybody's doing great, operating on all cylinders. John. Yes. Um, I've been asked this question a couple of times, and I'd just like to have some clarification. Down at the beach club, with the room that is above the kitchen, are we still using that at all for banquets or wedding receptions or anything? There's a wedding on Friday. Yeah, yeah. So, Did we? Okay. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they actually, right. They actually, I think it's the last uh, event down there. Um, so, that was, I think, two years ago. Help me out, two and a half years ago. Three, um, Ralph, Matt came to us. We did uh, refurbish upstairs. Um, they have had events there, yes. But there is one, I think, at this weekend. It's Thank the last you. one. Yeah. yeah, Friday, there'll be an 80 person wedding. Yeah. 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 Which they'll have. So, you know, just like we're seeing down at the grill and, and, and definitely at the Yacht Club, they'll grow it. They'll grow it. Good. Yeah. Yep. Good news. Yeah. Uh, okay, where am I? Turn the page. I guess we should have. Okay, so this is pretty much, and I pretty much told you about it, but the detail for the month of July, favorable. There's the detail. So here's the detail. Um, for the amenities, pretty much in sync with what I just told you. You can see Yacht Club. You can see golf, aquatics, beach club. Oh, so also the beach parking. Um, beach parking, we also had organic growth in it. Clubhouse grill. So these are the month numbers. We're at public relations, some good cost savings there to Josh and his team, general admin, across the board. Can I turn the page? So the year-to-date numbers, there's your 970. Okay. I, I don't know what else to say, operating on all cylinders. Any questions on it? I, I don't know. Yes, I do. So when you say flash, it literally flash, hot off the press, just received it, uh, turn the page. So you, as you know, we close on the 13th workday. Today is not the 13th workday. Uh, we have, and we are working on developing flash um, because I do believe it's important. Anywhere I've ever been, we have it. So we're trying to put in a process for that. But here we go. So let's go jump down to the bottom number like I do to 150, so 159,000 favorable to budget. Right, so if I take that number to the July number, that brings me to about 1.13, 1, 128,000 favorable to budget at this time. And again, we all know that you know all our revenue and everything is the first four or five months, so we do have a lot of expenses the rest of the year. Uh, however, this is favorable to budget and, and a lot better than all the prior years. There is no PPP money in this. Is there a reason Parks and Rec isn't on there anywhere? So I, what happened, Tom, is it's probably <coughs> netted in the bottom other because it was small. Mm -hmm. So it just he just netted it in there. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it was probably even on budget. Because again, this is favorable or unfavorable to budget. So for the month, she was pretty much on. Uh, anything else highlighting there, please? I know we had, an open, we had some open position, uh, so that could be, you know, some of it might be timing there. Public works, um, some of that is timing. Again, the aquatics already, golf ops. Turn the page. All right, Doug. Treasurer's report. Doug. Okay, next slide. So, um, we have the uh, rate of return on investments. It's 0.85%. Uh, it's uh, down from earlier in the year, but that 0.85 has been holding steady for the past several months. Uh, the cash position. Uh, as you can see, is 16.5 million broken down. As you see below, 95 and CDRs and 70 and other and other uh, financial vehicles. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as I've been doing for the past year, I just kind of chart the uh, assessment collections month to month. As you can see, we've steadily increased our uh, collection dollars to the point we are at the 9.05 uh, assessments collected to date. And the next graph should be a little more telling. Um, next slide, please. This is the one where I kind of keep track of where we were last year versus where we are this year. Red uh, was 2020. Uh, the assessment was 9.1, and through August, we had collected 8.4 million, or 92.2% of our assessment. Now we move to the current fiscal year. Our, our um, assessment dollars are 9.3, and we've collected 9.05, or 96.85% 
uh, of the assessment, which is very good. We've been averaging upwards of 98% of the uh, assessment collection, and we have uh, you know, done a pretty good job in reducing the uh, delinquent account. So good, you know, we have obviously done better. Clearly, yes, uh, last year was affected by COVID uh, and the extension for the uh, uh, deadline for uh, paying your assessment. Next, uh, next slide, please. So we keep we keep monitor on the reserve accounts. Uh, the bottom line is, as of uh, the end of July, we were at 8.0 million. We were at 8.7 a couple of months ago, but you'll notice that we've had a couple of transfers of four, uh, the 400,000 under bulkheads, uh, 200,000 under roads, and another 100,000 under drainage, which accounts for uh, that uh, increase. Or I'm sorry, that decrease in our targeted number for uh, the end of the year. We're we're again, as we as we look, we'll start to make sure that uh, from the from the 430 balance on um, you know, April this year it was 5.7 million, and we're targeting uh, to tro hopefully get better than that because it goes back to and it ties back into the reserve study that John had mentioned because uh, a couple of years ago we had passed a a motion to make sure that uh, after the expenditures for the police station, the clubhouse, and the other uh, large projects we had. We wanted to make sure we got back up to, I think it was 24 to 26 percent uh, of the reserve study. So uh, we're heading in that direction, but uh, we will keep monitoring it month to month. Next item. Next, next slide, please. Okay, and then here's a here's a breakdown of those um, uh, reserve expenditures. You look at the last three items at the bottom there: yacht club, kitchen equipment, the racket equipment, and other uh, accounts for the expenses from uh, the previous month. And again, uh, if you notice, the uh, uh, balance from uh, the end of uh, last fiscal year was 5.7. Right now, we're estimating we'll be at 6.2, uh, barring any emergency spending or other things that may come up uh, that are required for some capital and reserve spending. So it looks like we're on target. Again, as we do, we'll keep track of that and monitor closely. That's it. Okay, I'm going to uh, open the floor to public comments. But before uh, we do that, I just want to mention that I'm sure everybody understands we're involved in litigation right now. So if you uh, if you have questions about the litigation, we will not be able to respond to those questions. The floor is open for public comment. Please give your name and uh, address. Uh, Tempest Food. Uh, Joe Reynolds, 84 Watertown Road. Um, I'd like to talk about the uh, golf course spraying. I have no problem with spraying the fluid on the golf course. It's almost drinkable water. I do have problems with potential legal issues and maybe a couple other things. But by way of background, I talked to uh, someone that would have to say is at the highest levels of the uh, county system today. About 15 years ago, while I said Tempest Foods, it, the then director of public works for Worcester County and on video was proposing the expansion of the ocean body water treatment plant. And on video, he said that the treatment, the additional capacity was needed only, only for the ocean pines subdivision and the places people in ocean pines. Well, we know all know what's happened. We're running water and sewer all over northern end of the county here. But what you may not know is that we haven't even seen the tip of the iceberg on that issue. I learned today that the, the plant is designed for peak flow. So it doesn't matter much what happens around here in December, July and August that matter. Our peak flow this year, July 1st, 2021, 1.25 million gallons of water on July 4th, highest flow all year. Now the permit is based on an average for the top two months or whatever, but that was the peak flow. Plant capacity right now, without spending another nickel, without getting a new permit or anything else, is 2.5 million gallons a day. Think about that. Don't know if it's sunk in or yet. That plant has the capacity to handle another ocean pines, nearly 9,000 connections. This is not small potatoes. This, this is value in the tens of millions of dollars for developers. Incredible. But anyway, all that aside, what concerns me 
from a legal standpoint is how this contract is set up with the county. And I know you haven't gotten to that yet, but I don't want to see the county spend any more of the service area people's money until we got a contract in hand. And I'm afraid, I don't know if fear is a proper word, but if that system is put in and put in by the county, they're going to own it. John Ross said that at the hearing the other day, and they have to maintain it. And in my subsequent conversations, it looks like that once that goes in, they would have to own and maintain that in perpetuity. Now, they could subcontract with Ocean Pines or anybody else to handle the maintenance of it, but it would be their system. And maybe that sounds like a good idea, that they would maintain, pay for it for in perpetuity. But once that easement that's on that place that they're going to have to have, down at Riddle Farm, they have an easement. The easement covers the entire golf course. They need an easement over every place they spray, which is the entire golf course. Once we give them that easement, if it's in perpetuity, what does that do to the value of that land in 25 years, 50 years? We don't know what's going to happen in Ocean Pines in 50 years. If we sign a contract giving them that easement in perpetuity, we may have given away a tremendous value in that property in the future for purposes we have no idea right now. Right now, we own it outright. Down at Riddle Farms, when that was installed, that was the deal, the contract with the owners. A fellow named Ruark actually personally owns one of the board of golf courses. Maybe they deal with him and the, the uh, subdivision. But the county owns that land because they, they only have land application. They don't have any water discharge like we have. And one final thing that was mentioned to me, there's a distinct possibility that we start spraying this course and we spray 200,000 gallons a day on it, that the state of Maryland conceivably, don't know, but another possibility would ask or require that we reduce the flow into the, into the St. Martin's River, which in, re in reality would be a disaster if you, if you stop and think about it. So anyway, a lot of unknowns there. Um, I just ask you to be careful in your deliberations or whatever you do, because the last time we got into big contract negotiations, put it mildly, we got screwed on the YMCA lane because we didn't do our homework. I just urge you guys to do your homework. Thank you. Other public comments? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing no other public comments, I'm going to close the floor to public comments. <clears throat> uh, John, we have a pur purchase request. Yes. Hold on. All right, I can't draw my book. Let me read off there. All right, so I had mentioned, and this came up in the budget, right, the budget process, and we needed to get the permits for the T docs. Um, so I am coming forward. We did receive the permits. Um, so I'm requesting authorization to go forward with staff recommendation of $63,623.26 for Ravens Marine. Ravens Marine will uh, build the, uh, the T-Docs for us down in Florida. And then we have Fisher Marine. I believe that's on the bottom. T-Docs installation. I'm also requesting authorization to go forward with staff recommendation of $12,000 for Fisher Marine uh, to install the T docs. Now we were able to go directly to the supplier. Fish and Marine uh, stayed out of it, so we did save money there. Um, you have all the specs and all the detail for the T docs, so I'm coming forward for approval on that. Okay, so we have uh, these are two requests. We've got two. Correct. Two requests. The T docs to be and built. Then the since, labor. Right. Since we're going directly to them, I had to break. We had to break it out separate. Right, is there a motion to approve the? Uh, Expense for the T Doc uh, purchase for $63,623.26. So moved. Is there a second? Second. And discussion? I have a quick question. Um, oh. And it's just out of ignorance, so not, nothing else. Now, I noticed that of the two proposals, the, this one that we're accepting are all aluminum docks. Yes. What we have throughout Ocean Pines and everywhere I've seen with floating, most of the ones that I've seen are. Are pine, obviously, two by six pine docks. 
which have a whole, which have a, a much heavier weight and stability when you're walking on them and moving or tying boats to them. Right. Has there, did you do any research to see the difference in the, I know besides the price, I mean, frankly, the price is substantial compared to, to the right, other one. Right, the other one. We got a is, good price with this one. Yeah, I mean, no, is there any research done on the stability of the aluminum docks being lighter? I know the durability of them is obviously they'll last longer, don't have to be painted. Exactly. Um, but I just, I'm just, for safety mm -hmm. aspects, I've never, I, I'm just out of ignorance. I don't know what the difference in. in I mean, this was recommended by Fisher. Fisher's done all our work. Um, same thing with the team, with the research into it. This is what they're recommending. I believe they're, they're this is the way to go. I mean, I understand what you're saying. None of that ever came up that okay. uh, would be anything. Okay. And, I, and I'll follow up and I'll ask. But I, yeah, none I, of this. If anything, they said this is better. I mean, I'm sure for durability and, and last longer, right. I'm assuming it is. I'm just thinking about weight. I mean, you know, obviously when you put all this I mean, I'll ask. wood on there, it actually settles in the water a little bit, gets a little bit more stable when you're walking on it. But yeah. and, and be prepared that if it's really, really nice, they're going to. We're going to have to look at replacing all the docks with aluminum docks. You never know. <laughs> Be careful. Hey, I, Tom, I'll definitely find out, and I'll forward it. something to you and the rest of the board. But this Thanks. is, uh, yeah, if anything, I think it's better. Any other, uh, any further discussion on the motion? All right, seeing none, um, all in favor of uh, the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The uh, second um, request is a motion to spend $12,000 with Fisher Marine uh, to install the T-Docs when we receive them. Is there a motion to approve the expenditure? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Uh, is there any discussion on this motion? Right, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. The motion, <coughs> both, are, both are approved. John, CPI violations? Yes, something just came across my desk. So, let's see. He does. <laughs> All right. All right, so the 38 Crest Haven Drive, uh, we have a uh, roof maintenance. Uh, violation reference section 8-8.8.1. I don't know, one. So we've had a situation there. I have, we, I did go to legal. Legal sent a letter. Uh, the violations, can, and they're still in violation after all that. Uh, so we're coming forward. I, I believe that I need uh, approval from the board. They're telling me two thirds. Violations can be handled by a contractor with a two thirds vote by the board per resolution number one. Uh, back in January and again in March, the board voted to approve roof, roof maintenance violations to be handled by a contractor. Attorney letter was sent out, as I mentioned, on August 2nd, noting that the board can forward this violation to a contractor to resolve. Um, we will hire, assuming I get approval tonight, we will hire a similar contractor that we've used in the past, Busy B, licensed and insured, somewhere in the neighborhood of $200 uh, to handle this if approved. We just talk about getting the moss off the roof. Is that what? So uh, that's a big part of it. Uh, they they did mention something else. Hold on. So contract will spray fungicide to kill the moss mildew on the roof. He will recheck the roof after spraying the fungus to see if it's working and if anything else is needed. Yes. So it's the spraying, correct? Is that house occupied? I'd say yes. Okay. Is there any other uh, discussion? Um, so, is there a motion to approve um, you, the? So, if you approve it, then we'll go in and we'll spray it. And, right. So and then there's a fee. Right. To approve the expense that you had, they, they wrote the expense. Yeah, I mentioned it. It's it usually around $200. We've used them before. So, is there, is there a motion to approve the uh, general manager referring this out to a contractor to? Address the maintenance issue at 38 Crest Haven Drive. So moved. Uh, so moved. Second. Second. Uh, is there any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Right. Motion passes. All right, so unfinished business. Uh, Cammie, we have a second reading on resolution CO4. Yes, and as a 
just as a, a point of order, um, Bloodhorn and I had a discussion today, and according to Robert's rules of order, we apparently need to now move this into, make a motion out of this for voting process. I was fam more familiar with the second reading of this, but apparently we need to go now to the motion. And this is a motion that regards um, uh, for governing do documents proposed to change resolution C04. And C04 is designed for the purpose to keep the content of the bylaws and the requirements of the bylaws committee to update the governing, to update the governing document with needs and expectations of the organization. So the bylaws and resolutions committee who is chaired by um, Jim Trummel, who is sitting over here in, on the side, completed a root, uh, routine scheduled review of resolution C04 bylaws and resolutions advisory committee. This resolution outlines the duties and responsibilities of the committee at the June 4th, 2021 committee meeting. It was unanimously agreed by the quorum present that the resolution be revised and indicated in the attached red line graph. And so that has all been done. The significant change out of this is just to achieve conformity between um, the resolution amendment procedures and the actual bylaws. And just FYI, we have been undergoing a very comprehensive review of the bylaws with a bylaws work group that Doug and I sit on, Doug and Tom and I sit on, and Jim Trimmel's um, group is working very diligently on keeping our bylaws up to date and making changes where they are indicated. So resolution C04 is in fulfilling the purpose, in filling uh, its purpose, the bylaws committee performs functions which include, but are not limited to, and the relevant part here is assisting the board of directors in the preparation or revision of the charter, bylaws, resolutions, and other documents necessary for the governance and direction of the association, and the new part is, and compliance with the resolution amendment procedures that are in the attachment to B01. And so, um, Mr. President, I'd like to move that we affirm the bylaws resolution at C04 and allow and direct the bylaws and uh, <coughs> bylaws and rules committee to go ahead and make that change into the bylaws. Is that is that a motion? Yes, it is. Is there a second? Second. Uh, discussion. Yep. Just point of order that change we made actually in the uh, in the resolution came out. Yeah. Yeah. In the, in the resolution. Thank you. Uh, I do have a question, and um, what struck me from what you're saying is that the committee, if I, if I heard you correctly, you're saying the committee wants to assist in compliance. And I'm not sure that's the responsibility of the committee. Um, Jim, could you give us a little more insight into that if I uh, waive Robert's rules for temporarily? <coughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna waive Robert's rules of order to, so Jim can talk. <clears throat> Yes, and that's exactly what it yeah. says, Jim. Assisting the board of directors in preparation or revision of the charter, bylaws, resolutions, or other documents necessary for the governments for the governance and direction of the association, and compliance with the resolution amendment procedures that are in attachment to B01. So your state. But I, I'm, my concern is the word compliance, assisting compliance. That's not that's not an advisory committee's job unless someone wants to correct me. Yeah, point for Larry, uh, in, in Section 3A, it doesn't use the word compliance. I think maybe Cammy just used that as a 
you know, as a reference, but they're assisting the Board of Directors in preparation and revision of the Charter Bylaws, resolutions, and other documents necessary for the governance and direction of the association. And then it just added that and and a compliance compliance with the resolution process. Not compliance with the bylaws, but a compliance with that a B01 amended process, which says, hey, you got to go through a certain process in order to get a, a new re a new resolution submitted and considered or a change to an existing resolution, you know, submitted and considered. So it's not compliance with bylaws, it's compliance with this this uh, re resolution amendment procedure that's referenced in resolution B01. Yeah, I, I understand that, but, uh, but the, the, the word compliance, um, again, an advisory committee, it's not their function to make anybody comply with anything. They're an advisory committee. That's the, the word is the problem here. I don't think it means that they are enforcing compliance with that, that they are forcing compliance within the bylaw structure to make sure that they are up to date and meeting legal and ethical and any other kinds of needs we have. Would that be correct, Jim? Right here. So, um, Larry, may I comment on this? Yes. Um, I think what what I understand this to mean is that the bylaws committee will assist the board of directors in the application of these procedures. That those procedures are expected to be applied um, in you know the work of the um, bylaws and resolutions committee. I'm not sure that we need to have a compliance in there, but I do believe that the committee assists the board in ensuring that consistency in the application of these procedures um, across activities, the re relevant activities. Yeah. Uh, Jim, is that kind of what you're talking about here? I, I think so, but let me suggest this. That if we're hung up on the word compliance, it's a dangerous read governance and direction of the association using the, the resolution amendment procedures that are attached to the attachment to resolution B01. Take out and compliance with uh, and replace replace that using the. Is that a correct That's what we're trying to do. That use, that, use that attachment when you when you go through amending the resolutions or a new resolution. And, and I'm, so I'm fine with that. I just, again, an advisory committee has no responsibility to make sure anybody complies with anything, whether it be the board or another committee. So that's my problem with compliance. If, you, if we want to change that, if you want to change it, I, I don't know. That's my suggestion, not that you do that. Well, I will accept that as a, yeah, I will accept that as a friendly amendment if that will suffice. All right, well, let's uh, reinstate Robert's rules. Um, Doug, you want to take a shot at this? Yeah, you know, just not not trying to be argumentative. I mean, whatever you put in there, you're complying with a requirement, okay? And you're complying with a requirement for a process, not re complying with a requirement with the fear of retribution for breaking a law, okay? So the idea here is if it makes you feel more comfortable in adherence with, in conjunction with, make a reference to that B01 uh, procedure, okay? Because absent of that, we will mm -hmm. have unabated control of anybody, you know, you could send an email in and say, hey, I'm going to change a bylaw or a resolution, okay? All we're doing is trying to make it consistent so that any time a resolution is brought up as a new resolution or a resolution is brought up for a change, it follows the same process, okay? So we're, we're splitting hairs here, but if you really don't like the word compliance, I don't have a problem with it, but in adherence with. Change it to that. So that okay? That's fine with me. So would you accept that as a friendly amendment? I certainly will. All right. Is there any further discussion on um, uh, the motion to uh, approve the changes to Resolution CO4? Seeing none, 
Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any aye. Opposed? None opposed. There, just confirmation it says in adherence with. In, in adherence with. Okay. Right. That's, and I'm going to give this to Tammy so she can make I will. Thank you. change. <clears throat> Uh, Colette, you have a uh, second reading of uh, Resolution CO6. Right, um, and the motion will be to approve the revisions to Resolution CO6, um, the Communications Advisory Committee Resolution. Purpose and effect is to update the language regarding the functions of the Communications Advisory Committee to align with what the committee does for the board. The background is that in accordance with the requirement to review committee resolutions on a regular basis, the attached document reflects recommended updates to the resolution submitted by the Communications Advisory Committee. The first reading of this document occurred during the meeting on July 21st, 2021. Approval is sought today of the revisions that set, as set forth in the attached document. So the attached document incorporates all the revisions that were presented to you all in the 20, the meeting of July 21st. And with the approval, pending the approval today, this will become effective today and adopted today. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Any discussion? Not seeing none, mm -hmm. all in favor of uh, approving the motion to to uh, change CO6, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion passes. <clears throat> All right. Um, the next issue is um, a discussion topic uh, on the effluent water uh, by Frank. Or as has been suggested to me, we should be calling this recycled water. Okay. Well, the topic, unfortunately, is county effluent water proposal. Uh, the concise statement is Worcester County has proposed using affluent water from the Ocean Pines treatment facility to irrigate the Ocean Pines golf course. And the background is uh, Worcester County has been working with the GM and his staff uh, on a proposal to use affluent water for irrigating the Ocean Pines golf course. The purpose of this discussion is to discuss the benefits and drawbacks of this proposal in preparation for a board vote on this matter. Let me continue, okay, Larry? Yep. First, uh, the county did an excellent job at the town hall of presenting the proposal and answering questions. Uh, and they also have asked us at this point in time only to issue as a board a letter of support for the proposal so it can move forward within the county mechanism. Uh, what I would like to propose is the minutes and the subsequent questions and answers that were sent to the GM and answered uh, be included uh, in the minutes of this board meeting because a lot of those questions came from the, uh, came from the public. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there were several other questions that came to me that I forwarded to John uh, and asked him to be able to respond to as part of the discussion. And I guess I'll start with the first question, and it continually comes up, is what is the uh, current condition and state of the golf course irrigation system? Um, and the reason I bring, well, the, the specifics that, that were also asked as a subset of this is what are the current annual maintenance costs of the system? Uh, based on the reserve study, when is the current system scheduled to be replaced? Uh, what is the current estimated replacement cost of the system based on the reserve study? And the fourth question is, does the current operating condition of the system track with the DMA study? And to kind of explain that, there's some discussion in, uh, within the community that the current system is leaking and near failure and needs imminent need of replacement. So that's the first First things that I would, if, if you could address, John. Sure, sure, Frank. And, uh, and I just want to say thanks to Justin. He showed up tonight. Um, I had, he's always there to support. So, okay, so to answer your questions, Frank, and hopefully, everyone, what is the condition of the, of the irrigation system? Well, obviously, it functions. It definitely functions. It, it waters every day. 
Um, as far as the pipes, and, and I'll ask Justin to jump in and he can correct me or add to it in any way. Um, from what I've seen over the several years, and especially the three, four years I've been there working, you know, going down there, talking to Andre and now with Justin, uh, <clears throat> the pipes, the, the pipes underground that feed the whole system are 50 years old. They're 50 years old, and that tells you something. Um, the pumping station, uh, all the equipment there, it works. Uh, it does need a lot of maintenance. We have done repairs there, um, but it's, it, it's ready. It's ready to be replaced. If, and just to jump ahead, if we took the affluent water, uh, just the pressure and everything, we believe that the pipes we have, everything now, would not be capable of handling the pressure. No, we'd be running. Yeah, we'd we'd be running at reduced rates as we are now. So we're looking to upgrade the whole system to be, have the capacity to water the entire property. So was it my understanding, from what I from what I heard from the town hall meeting, is that they're going to put in all new pipes, right? They're not going to use what we have. It, it would the way what they recommended and in, in, in Justin will jump in too when H, what is it HDS came in is replacing the whole thing right entire right. system and and the discussion was they are going to just leave the old pipes in place that's what I heard the other save time. cost right so to continue on Frank's questions and, and, and points so so the system is operating um, it's a fifty year old system what's happened over time and I can't remember exactly. But I don't know if it was 10, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, they did add, and we talked about this over a year ago, they, whoever at that time, added uh, an outside ring. Andre went through this with us, an outside ring of uh, sprinkler heads to increase the amount of uh, fairway or uh, golf course that they were able to spray. So that's obviously newer uh, than the original. What happens there and what I've seen and what I've witnessed and less so now this year than the prior years was maintenance in a sense where pipes, we would have leaks. You'd see them on 10 or 12, whatever. I saw it on 10 a lot. Um, where then we had to use the maintenance staff to go in, dig, dig around it, fix the pipe, correct it. And that was a lot of maintenance. It was a lot of labor hours and, and parts. I did not notice that much this year compared to other years. Uh, Justin told me when I asked him why, uh, and I'll ask him to jump in again, but he told me that uh, where, and we all witnessed this, he's spraying less water than we did in the past. So if you want to just tell us why there was less this year than in other years or where we're at. Yeah, and so we've, um, yeah, we've been making a lot of adjustments to kind of the way we water the golf course. We're trying to use less water as much as possible because we are dealing with a lot of very old parts of the current system. So we're trying not to force an issue to make it fail. You know, we want to be successful. So we're just trying to be very cautious how we run a, a very old system, uh, essentially is what we're doing. So, so if there was ever a need to water more, Justin, you're saying that we would probably have some situations more so? Yeah, so I mean, um, this year we've been pretty fortunate with the weather overall for our situation here. Um, but obviously, if you go through extreme drought stresses, things like that, that all puts strain on the system. So there could be years where we see a lot more breaks, a lot more failures um, in the pipe system. So the weather is going to drive a lot of that. So, so what kind of maintenance, what kind of costs have I seen over the last several years? And Justin's been here, what, two or three years. But so for parts, somewhere five to 20,000 a year, probably higher, 15, 20,000 for parts, uh, plus the labor. I, we don't have exact numbers on the labor. I believe this year it was less than in the past. It was one year where there was a lot of labor uh, and took a lot of effort in there. So, you know, say, and I'll ask Justin to give me uh, what he thinks it would be now since he's there. What kind of labor number do you think? So the parts somewhere to 15 to 20,000, what would you just estimate now for the labor? Yeah, I mean, typically, I mean, if, if we have a break, I mean, you could, I mean, you're going to lose a guy for a day, at least maybe two days fixing. You could have 16 man hours a week going towards repair, I mean, easily just to keep things running. Um, and in certain situations, if you're checking heads and just making sure everything's operating right, I mean, it, you'd have, you could essentially spend a full-time guy, 40 hours a week. 
maintaining the system. So it just depends on what Chairman. issues come about. Yes. Um, I'm not a golfer, so you have to educate me about this. But if we did lay down the piping for this affluent system, which is, I understand what Worcester County is trying to do, how would that take the golf course out of commission for any amount of time? And if so, how long would the rest of the year be? So let me start off, and then Justin will jump in. So as part of that study with, what is it, HDS? Okay. HDS, the company you work with. <clears throat> The hydro design. So we're looking at, we from the beginning, we talked about it, November to March. I think they need five consecutive months to put it in. Somewhere that's the estimate. That's a time of the year where there is not a lot of play. Uh, and that's where we do have our cost. And what I was just thinking of when Justin and I were talking earlier today, that's probably more members play then. So it, it I don't want to say minimal, but if that's the time we do it, it won't have a big effect coming off. Well, that question was also asked at the town hall meeting, and the response uh, from John Ross was that, you know, of course, they don't do the whole thing at one time. They do it piece by piece. And uh, I remember his comment. He said, you know, these guys are, are very quick, um, and there was very little disruption. You may have a disruption on a hole for a day or two. Exactly. Uh, but uh, he's, he made a point of emphasizing that, he would go out and look, and the next thing you know, the stuff is done. Right. So it's not good. The whole course would, would never be shut down. Right. Maybe a little looting of some of the holes. Right. And Larry's right, and Justin's saying it too. You know, we're talking about one or two holes for, you know, a day, X amount of days. I, I, it doesn't concern me if it's done between November and March, to be honest with you. It really isn't. And one of the benefits of doing it like that, was the next answer I'm going to give Frank and the board is, when they're in there and they're in there in one shot, I mean, it's going to be the more efficient and effective way to do it. And that's, I'm just leading into the next uh, couple of questions that Frank had. Yeah. Actually, I want to uh, skip to the third question because then it ties back to the second question, which ties back to, to the whole issue of another overriding issue we have with all the amenities. Um, my understanding is, and I want to make sure that it's clear to the people in the community, is affluent is currently sprayed on several courses that arguably compete with the Ocean Pines course. Yes. I mean, I think it's the people up here that golf would say that. Um, and my understanding is Glen Riddle and Lighthouse Sound both have county affluent systems installed, and they're privately owned. The... Uh... Their systems, I think the effluent, I believe, was uh, used at Glen Riddle like shortly after they were built. So Glen Riddle originally only had effluent piped to six holes on the 36-hole property. So it was not an entire facility that was receiving effluent. Um, just the last couple years, they did receive a transfer line that now pumps the water to the irrigation pond over there. So now they can pull it from the pond and uh, spray it all over the entire facility but not the entire irrigation system that was built by them. So partial irrigation system for Glen Riddle. So uh, is that the same for Lighthouse Sound, or does Lighthouse Sound have a... Lighthouse hmm. Sound is, I believe, also just holding it in the irrigation pond now, which is what we're going to do with the, the system, but it wasn't an irrigation pond built for this okay. facility entirely. And then Eagles Landing has an affluent system, and that's city-owned. Yes. And River Run has an affluent system mm -hmm. that sprays, I understand... The woods, the but they're going to change it to spray the whole golf course this upcoming year. They're uh, they're going to start putting it out on several holes. Yes, and the county does own the effluent, uh, the irrigation spraying is okay. there for that. So uh, just from then, kind of a little different take on this. So if the county uh, owns and operates these systems or partial systems on these courses, and we don't have to take a don't take advantage of the county offer, and we put in a similar system, which is going to be $3.1 million, how does that affect our competitive position? Because we compete for players with these courses, and they're using, in effect, a county system rather than something that would be paid for if we turned it down by Ocean Pines. So, Frank, I... I <laughs> The question in general 
is a question that should be asked. It's a little different here, obviously. Um, you know, the the this is a this would be a capital. It, it's capital in nature. Uh, it would be replacement. Obviously, it, it would have an effect on it. Uh, whereas, if uh, it would cost us, if we would do it. Let's 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 take the numbers that the, the county just gave us, right? We heard the number three point two. Um, Justin broke it Brad broke it down for me because I said Justin, I I, I thought it was two point eight. Um, the two point eight is what it would cost to do the the golf course. The other four or five hundred thousand dollars is more the piping that we wouldn't have if we did this alo alone ourselves, and, and stuff that the county needs to do to get it from the plant to us. Am I correct on that? So we're looking at a system that's $2.8 million or somewhere in that neighborhood. Obviously, we would have to pay that. Um, would we be changing our prices or whatever? You know, we're, we're going to be looking at the prices, but it, it, would be, it would be a cost. And obviously, on the, the non-operating side, our depreciation and everything would go up higher. The system now would be f pretty much depreciated in two years. Um, Steve did some work for me last week because I was anticipating these questions. I think it's, I think it's like around thirty-five thousand dollars depreciation for the irrigation system over the, you know each year for this year and next year, and then that's it. It's fully depreciated. Is so, there any, fur any further discussion on this topic? So there is a piece that Frank asked. He asked what's in the DMA study and what would it cost. So, and I'm going to ask Justin to jump in because he did do the work on it for me. And uh, he'll, he'll talk to, to you about what's in the DMA study, what was in, and what, as part of the light study that we're doing now with Justin and, and, and we were doing going forward to to bring up more to speed how much it costs to, to replace the irrigation. So let Justin talk to you about that so you can get an idea where we're at. I just mentioned that the, the, the system is going to be fully, you know, just about fully depreciated. So Justin's going to talk to you about what's in the DMA study and what he's doing to adjust it to get it more current. Yeah, so I was looking through um, some of that DMA study, um, and I was trying to just pull out a lot of the irrigation coming up and there's a lot of just pieces and parts and kind of service to the current system listed in there um, just looking at electric controllers pumps um, it's hard to find like every part of the system being replaced in that study um, so I, I pulled the irrigation out of it from 2021 through 2040 and combining all those parts you know head alterations pumps uh, some of the pieces that were in there it only came to about two million dollars so it's not effectively covering the full replacement of pipes and wire and everything that would go into getting a brand new system. It's more kind of replacing just parts and pieces as they seem to fail. Um, so it's it's kind of difficult to compare, but like we were looking at a 2.8 million brand new system, everything new in the ground. Um, and going through 2040 of that study, we're only looking at spending $2 million in towards replacement of the current system. So can I can I just and first of all, Justin's done great work on this for us. Um, so what he's saying is, over the next twenty years in the DMA study, before we did the light study, the updating that we're doing now, there was a pro he found approximately two million dollars uh, to update that system over nineteen years. So he also said that that's not the pipes doesn't have any wires, so it, it may not even fully encompass everything. What what and Justin did all this, is he's, for the light study, he's updating it, uh, what he believes it would cost us, and especially, you know, even if we did it over five or seven years, with the new current prices that he's seen with this outside company coming in, and again, when you do anything in five months and somebody's in there, that's going to be more effective and efficient, and, and it's obviously going to cost you less then you do it over five years, seven years. So I'm going to let Justin tell you what he believes it would cost over five, seven years uh, based upon what he's been doing, which we would be adjusting the DMA study with the light study, right? Yeah, so what we're looking at adjusting in there is um, there's, if you 
stretch that project over the course of five years, uh, you're just going to have a lot of additional costs. You're going to pay mobilization for contractors every year, um, which will go up. All your parts for the project that you're going to have to purchase every year are going to increase. Um, so over the five-year span, we broke it up. Like So year one, we spend 600000 towards the irrigation and do like three or four holes. You know, the next year with uh, inflated cost, you'd look at 630000 and 660, 700, 750. Um, so you're going to take a $2.8 million for the five month project and spend 3.3 to 3.5, depending on where the pricing goes with materials. Okay. So that's, and that's, that 2.8 is the county. So is there any other uh, discussion on the item? On this one last, there, there was one last question. Put this item to bed. Uh, I think, John, you have the statistics. How many different homeowners in an average year use the golf course? So, and, I, and I've, I've gotten this question many times over the years, even when I was on BNF. Um, the original study was done way back by, uh, I guess, the prior, prior treasurer or whatever. I've asked <laughs> the Pete Gomsack rule. So Pete told me when I was on BNF 10, 12 years ago, he said to me, and one year it was actually, and they did calculations, and John Malinowski has done calculations for me over the last several years. It's always been in the range of 1,800 that I've received, whether it was from Pete or from John, the numbers I've received is anywhere from 1,800 households to somewhere around 2,000 and, and change. So that's households. So let's say in my house, if there were two people playing, it would only count as one. Okay. And we can get updated. We can get updated if you want, John. But the last time I heard it was over eighteen hundred. And just, just for kind of yucks, how does that compare with like aquatics? Do we have the statistics for aquatics? I don't have it available. Um, you did ask me the other day. I spoke to Kathleen. We're going to look into it, but I don't have it. It would be good to have that number at some point. Yeah. I guess from my my questions on the discussion, at this point in time, the county is asking for a letter of support. It seems like a no-brainer to support it because we're competing with people that, that's, to some degree or another, have county systems. They obviously are going to have the same issues with easements that we have and maintenance that we're going to right. address in the contract. So, can I tell you, right, so look, the questions I heard, and I'm glad somebody brought them up, and I appreciate it, obviously, I have to look at it. The easement did come up a week and a half ago, maybe it was two weeks, when John Ross uh, was talking to me. However, the, the other... Golf courses have dealt with it. We have to look into it. Obviously, yeah. that's where we're going now. They're if excellent I, if questions. I it, if I heard it correctly uh, at the town hall meeting, the easements and the maintenance and the ownership would expire in 15 years when the bond is up. That's what I heard. So I heard that also, Larry, and then we would take over the, 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 um, the system. So, the 15, so the, during that 15 years, they, the county, would pay for the maintenance. Right. So, you know, Justin and I were talking about that because Justin did work at one of the other golf courses where they put it in there. What Justin said was what the agreement there was, was that the county paid for the material. And uh, and again, this still has to be negotiated. But what they did there was then the, the, um, the maintenance staff uh, put it in. Now, also Justin's going to point out to all of us is that over the first several years, you probably don't have that main, that much maintenance at all. And Justin, what, what would you, I mean, you did deal with it for several years. What did you say? Yeah, and I actually, um, I did speak with the superintendent at Eagles Landing, which is very comparable to the county here in that system. Um, <clears throat> you know, and basically you can write those easements up a lot of ways, but yeah, currently they'll like basically have the county pay for parts and they might install it themselves just because they're more familiar with the golf course and the setup. Um, to take care of something. All right, so we don't have to get into those details right, right, right now, John. So right, and I'm for gonna, 15 years, that would not be on our books. Right, so I'm going to ask the board uh, uh, for a show of hands and Colette uh, for a yay or nay uh, on whether or not the board uh, wants at this point to support uh, this and send a letter of support to the county. Everybody's – and Colette, still there? I know she supports it, too. Okay. Yes, I, I was muted. Sorry. I do support this. Okay. Okay, the next uh, discussion topic is uh, the property owner survey. Colette? Yes. Um, 
The topic of this is information for the board on the communication plan and associated costs for the homeowner survey to support development of recommendations for a strategic plan for OPA. Concise statement, the Strategic Planning Advisory Committee was charged by the board to gather information necessary for the committee to make recommendations regarding the development of a strategic plan for OPA. The committee has prepared a property owner survey for distribution in service of this effort. The chair of the committee, I believe, um, Bernie, you're present. Um, yes, and I'm going to ask Larry if he would suspend Robert's rules of order so that uh, Bernie can present um, a brief synopsis of the distribution plan for the board and the projected costs associated with the effort in the hopes that you will approve the um, the plan and the cost. Um, background on that is that the board received for their review the proposed property owner survey prior, prior to our meeting on July 21st, 2021. Based on the feedback from that meeting discussion and the board's review of the draft survey, the committee has finalized the survey for distribution to property owners. It has been field tested using all of the proposed communication methods and final edits are complete. Today's discussion is for the board to receive information about the plan for communicating the survey to the property owners and the costs associated with that. And then I did attach for the board a document containing additional information about the survey process. In those documents, there's information about the relationship between sample size and margin of error and I believe Bernie will be talking about sampling um, and the details of the distribution and the communication plan and the details of the cost. So Larry, would you um, allow, um, would you suspend Rob? Yeah, with that, so I'll... Bernie has four slides to share with you. All right, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and suspend Robert's rules. You're up. Hey, thank you. Thank you for the time. Uh, my name is Bernie McGurry. I'm the uh, co-chair of the Strategic Planning Committee. And uh, did you say I had 34 slides? Today. No, <laughs> I had four <laughs> slides. Um, so again, this this plan has um, been developed. It's been um, shared with the Communication Committee, so they took a look at it. We work closely with Josh on this. So again, um, I'm just going to highlight a few things. So next slide, please. So the goal for the number of completed surveys is 1,000. And the reason is, we, if you go any larger than that, the margin of error is small. But we want to get at least 1,000 residents, ideally 500 part-time to represent the part-time residents and 500 full-time. And we have plans to accomplish that. Also, the last survey was underrepresented by younger families. So we want to make sure we, we sample in places where younger families with children to get representation from them. Um, the only other thing I'd say on this last uh, slide for your information is, the last survey, I don't know what the costs were, but it was all hard copy. It was mailed. It had to be at least $8,000 just in mailing costs. So keep $8,000 in mind. Next slide. Um, detailed plans. I, I think bottom line is the headline here is all this is being done at no cost. We're going to take advantage of the communication boards out there. We're going to hopefully work with the local papers. It really is just putting a link up on the website, a link on the week. There's really not a lot of cost to this. Some of Josh's time, which we're asking for approval of, he's been great to work with. And then the next one, the next slide, um, again, minimal costs. Uh, bottom line, it's $650, we think, to, to print some things. First of all, we want to print, um, we'll call them business card reminders. Um, and we talked to some people that work at some of these locations, and they didn't feel it would be appropriate to hand out the survey. They thought a small card with a QR code that you can actually go right to your phone, take the survey. And we have tested the survey, phone, iPad, and computer. It works everywhere. So it's a hybrid approach. Secondly, we are going to print some hard copies and make them available at the admin building, the CPI building, and the park where people, you know, that want a hard copy can get it. And finally, um, is we'll also allow re requests for a survey by phone or email. So, um, so you know, just like they'd respond to the oceanpines.org, we will make those available. And that's where the bulk of the time comes in. We estimated that if we get 100 requests, that was five minutes per request, that was the bulk of the staff time. So all in all, $650, we're, I don't think we're concerned about the cost as much, but um, 
we, we, we are confident that doing this hybrid approach of both online and having available for those people that want will be successful. And then to wrap up, last slide please, Michelle, is um, again, we're calm. I tend to be optimistic. I, I think we'll get the thousand residents um, to respond. Um, we spent 1,260 so far um, on the premium survey monkey software that can be used through next year. Um, and hopefully we'll take a lot more surveys. Um, and then uh, we're requesting approval to move forward. Again, $650, 20 hours of staff time, but it really it's probably closer to eight to 10, um, depending on how many requests we get. And then we're gonna be ready to release this um, on the 27th. So um, we welcome any feedback or comments. I'm not sure about the Roberts Rules of Orders, but um, we feel pretty good about where we're at. Had a lot of good input from a lot of homeowners and um, a lot of good work by the committee and uh, we're ready to go. Thank Great you. Any questions for Bernie? Good job. I'm gonna reinstate Robert's rules. Yeah, so hey, John, are you comfortable with the uh, staff time estimates? That's all. Yeah, no, we totally support okay. this, yes. That's all. Okay. Is the board gonna be able to review the survey before it's put out? Yeah. How's that work? I, uh, it was my understanding that this was not gonna happen until we had an opportunity to review it and get a more exact cost. So I think it's gonna have to be at the next board meeting. Um, actually, I sent you all a copy of the survey. You should have gotten it before this meeting. And I sent you the details of the actual cost. So um, if you reviewed what was sent to you and reviewed what was in the board packet, um, that information was there for us to make a decision today. So, Colette, you did this as a discussion topic. You didn't do this as a motion. Yeah, um, I was told that we didn't really need to have it as a motion, that we were looking for consensus to, um, you know, kind of put this forward. But I will um, give you a motion right now if you would like one. I, I think that's what we're going to need. Okay, so the motion is to um, approve the distribution of the homeowner survey as detailed in the document that was distributed to the board this past week um, with the costs that were detailed this evening in the distribution plan and the staff time estimate included in the distribution plan detailed this evening. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is there any further discussion on this issue? All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's move Thank into you. New, we'll new, move into new business. Uh, I've got the first motion. Uh, we uh, The motion is uh, I move to uh, vote to approve the, the proposed name submitted by Worcester County for two additional roads added to phase two of Triple Crown Properties Development, Belmont Court, and Seattle Slough Lanes are the requested road names. Uh, purpose and effect, Triple Crown Properties has added two additional roads to phase two of the development and Worcester County has asked us for approval. Uh, uh, the background Triple Crown Properties is developing land adjacent to Ocean Pines and based on prior agreements, the development will be turned over to Ocean Pines once the properties have been sold. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes, I have a point of discussion. In the um, letter to Ruth Ann Myers from Kelly Henry, the Technical Service Division Manager um, of the Review and Permitting Department of Worcester County, they pointed out that there may be some confusion with a similarly named um, street in Section 15B, which is about Beaumont Court, which could be confused with Belmont Court, and they suggested that we consider having it be Belmont Place or Belmont Track instead. 
and I think we ought to consider that amendment to this motion as an amendment to this motion. Um. I think I'd, I, my personal preference, Colette, is I think I'd just prefer to stick with the names that Marvin Steen has submitted. I would concur. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fine with me. I just thought I'd point that out. Yeah. I hope the people on Belmont Court and Beaumont Court don't so suffer from this decision. All right, any, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Uh, Doug, you uh, you got first readings of resolution CO3, FO2, and FO3. Yeah, look, we'll do them one at a time for a minute's purposes. Yeah. But uh, uh, resolution C03, I'm submitting it for a first reading. Uh, the purpose is obviously first reading is required for proposed changes to resolutions. And the background is the Budget and Finance Committee has recommended the submitted changes to resolution C03. So I'd like to get it recorded as a first reading. All right, next item is um, resolution F02. Same thing, I'm reporting with all details. Uh, first reading was required, recommended by the Budget and Finance Committee. So they get recorded as a first reading for F02. And at the risk of repeating myself, I'd like the same thing for F03. Please record it as a first reading for F03. Were there any questions on any of these uh, resolutions from anybody? Yes, I had questions on uh, resolution F02 on page one, um, section 4F, limits of authority. The word um, shall was deleted and should was put in its place. And I'm wondering why that change was made. It sounds like it changes the meaning from being a sentence that directs action versus recommends action. And it seems like directing is what we should be doing here. Doug, can you explain why that change was made? I uh, recommend that we uh, bring that the issue before the Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, I will take that as a question and uh, talk to the Budget and Finance Committee okay. and get you an answer. Okay, and then I have the same comment about Section 7A um, that talks about in the general manager's report to the board during regular boarding meetings, significant, significant variances of 5% within any department. Um, should be reported is the change from shall be reported. And I believe um, the GM contract requires that that um, variance be explained. Um, so I, I do believe that what we want there is shall versus should. No, 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 I'll get you an answer. So again, would you take that back to the committee and ask for reconsideration? Okay. Yes. Any any further discussions on these uh, first readings? All right, Tom, you have a discussion topic on this ease control. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, bring this up in front of the board. The, the, the packet that you have in front of you, I'll give you the opportunity to read it. We can discuss it again at the next board meeting. But the Environmental and Natural Assets Committee, has, we've been looking into ways of controlling the geese. We had issues with it years ago, um, or especially around the Veterans Memorial. Sharon, who's on the Environmental and Natural Assets Committee, did all this research on this flight turf, which is a turf grass that was a, a grass that was developed for airports specifically to prevent goose, uh, geese flying into planes. They use it, and there's a lot of examples in it in this packet. Um, it's not inexpensive. Um, it's it's what twenty six hundred dollars an acre. Um, and that doesn't include what it would cost to, to put it in by our public works. So that's one of the issues that we would have to discuss and find out what the, what the process would be. What we're recommending, what the, the committee was recommending or asking for is to put it in a, to do a test area at the, south, at the North Gate Pond where the geese congregate um, and see how it works over a year to see if you can be able to show specifically whether there are geese eating, because basically what it is, it's, it's patented grass that geese don't like the flavor of. That's all it is. And it's de and deer don't either. So for Lyme disease, it's a really big thing because deer ticks are one of the, or are the purveyor of Lyme disease. So it actually keeps the deer from feeding in and around ocean pines. It would also do the same with the geese. They would go somewhere else, try out the grass. The other good thing about this is 
It's low maintenance. It only, instead of being cut every two weeks around here, it's cut twice or, twice or three times a year. It doesn't take as much water to keep it, to keep it live and growing. Um, and it's a low grass. It doesn't grow as fast and doesn't grow as high. Um, so there's a lot of good things about it. Obviously, it's, a, it's an expense, um, but I, if, it, if it would work, if it works there, it could be something that could be planted around the Veterans Memorial in order to keep the geese from congregating there, and that's where our biggest issue is, all around the Veterans Memorial and the path around the South Pond. So I just, I just wanted to bring it up. Sharon has done an amazing amount of work on it. If you have any questions, email them to me. We can get the answers to them. Um, but I wanted you, everybody to take a look at it just to get your ideas and your thoughts on it to see what you might think. I mean, it's not inexpensive, but then again, we had, you know, when, when we did, when we did the, the issue, we had the issue with the geese a few years ago, there's a lot of dissension in the, in the, in ocean pines and we, we don't need to create any more of that. So, um, it's just another option for geese control. So that was all. And I, you know, I, I, I just yeah. have to say that, uh, I, I happened to play golf at um, River Run on Saturday. And I saw that they have these fake boxes out mm -hmm. all around the water. <laughs> and in the whole round, I saw one goose. <laughs> that was it, around the water, just one. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a feasible option too. I'm just bringing so it we've, up. We've looked at every option there is to be to mankind. The thing about the geese, they're smart enough to know if you don't move the foxes, if you leave them in the same place for over two, over two weeks, the geese will start will show back up. So there's there's issues with all of that. There's the I mean there's the balloons. There's the round. I mean we've looked at every single thing you could imagine um, for for geese deterrence for keeping them away from the ponds. Um, the, the other issue would be growing the grass around the ponds to four or five feet tall. So because they won't go into the ponds because they they can't see if any predators are coming, which is why we don't have any at that specific that pond over by the 90 bridge. So, I'll volunteer my backyard for the deer. What's that? <laughs> okay. I'll take all you can give me. So, Tom, I have a question. Sure. Um, Tom, in light of all this um, work that the committee has done looking at other alternatives that the committee seems um, to be ruling out, um, I think it would be instructive for the board to be um, educated about what those other options are and what the pros, the, the um, balance of positives to negatives or negatives to positives are there that um, support your recommendation that we not consider these other options sure. so that we can have a comparison of those options as well as this one that has some costs associated with it. Okay, so absolutely. That, so if you could ask the committee to do that, to prepare that for our discussion next month, I think that would be helpful. Absolutely. We have all that in, in files from the last few years after the, right. after the issue. So Thank absolutely. you. You're welcome. Just to, Thank just you. Comment, to comment and a thought, um, this costs $2,600 an acre. That whole Northgate pond can't be more than, what, three, four acres? It's three. Three acres? Mm -hmm. I mean, if this seed really is recommended to be planted in the fall, and we wait until the next board meeting, which is going to be October, is there a danger we're going to lose the planting season? Um, it, it, I mean, that's the high. It's, it's a very durable seed. If you, when you read through this, you'll see that it, it's it's extremely durable, and it, it won't it won't go it won't does won't just die if it if it gets a cold spell or anything. It's very salt treatable. It doesn't it's, it's not affected by salt water either, so that's why it's really good for being for in our area. Um, so it really won't. I don't think it would make that big of a difference if we wait if we if we wait till the next meeting. I just wanted you guys to have the information. And we can wait, and because it's gonna. We also have to. I have to talk with John about the cost for public works putting this in, yeah. because the ultimate way to do it is to remove the grass that's there and put the seed down. You can overseed with if you aerate and put the seed down in the grass because it will overtake regular grass. So yeah, and my only point is I don't. Right. If if it's good, right, we don't want to lose a year. Well, that's I know, but that's the issue. We <laughs> yeah, I, you're absolutely right. So, I, I agree. I mean, so Tom, we, yeah. uh, Larry Board, so I was just talking to Justin. Justin is going to research this, and he's he's offered to get involved with it and to help out and okay. to see what's involved. So. I mean, because there's no reason it can't be used on the golf course around the ponds there where the... Well, where he'll, the he'll, do the, he'll do the Northgate test. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. It's not the great great idea. We're always looking for <laughs> new ways to deter geese around pines. So, yeah, I'll certainly All right. help All right. look into that as well. 
I appreciate it. We'll bring it to the next committee meeting and, and we can discuss a little bit more in detail. I appreciate it very much. Thank yep. you. All right, so I have, uh, 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 or were there any other questions for Tom? Okay, uh, seeing none, I have, uh, we have five appointments. I'm gonna read all five and then we can vote on them. Uh, Donna McElroy, second term Marine. Sue Chellis, I think that's how it's pronounced, first term Marine. John Dilworth, chair of the ARC committee. Patty Stevens, chair of the uh, Rec and Park Committee, and Tom Piotti, uh, second term Budget and Finance Committee. Do I have a motion to approve those appointments? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Um, can I have a, that's it. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. Uh, second. Second. And all in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. All right.